Hello patrons, this is Gail. Please excuse the glare on my glasses. I won't make you look at it very long. Um, this is going to be a fun tutorial. Uh, it's something that I've been wanting to do for quite a while and just never had an occasion to do it. So I'm going to do, make a hydrangea flower uh, from a Skinner blend and I'm going to put it on the top of a jar and use that as a decorative item you know in my office somewhere in my clay room so I hope you like it and I, let's just get started hi everyone this is Gail and I just wanted to show you what my what I'm going to attempt to do anyway uh, years ago I bought this cutter set. It's a, actually a fondant cutter set for flowers. It's a Wilton set. And I believe I got it at Michael's with a coupon. And with the intention of making some flowers with it. The only problem with me is that I don't make big projects. Most of what I make are fairly small. And everything was a little bit large. Like this, I wanted to do a hydrangea, which is what I'm going to do today. But this is the hydrangea petal. And it's a little over an inch square. And it's just a little big for what I want to do. So I had to put this aside and come up with my own method of doing a hydrangea. And what I'm going to do is I have this little jar. It's a cute little jar. It looks like a honeycomb. And it has a, the metal top and everything. But it's kind of plain. So I thought I would cover this top with hydrangea blossoms. So the first thing I need to do is to take this top off. And that's easy to do. It just slips off and then take it off of the metal ring. So now I have this ceramic top and I can make my flower on here. So I am going to put that aside for a while. And I decided to make a Skinner blend of blue and this is Lagoon, I believe. Souffle Lagoon. And this is the So 80s some Primo White and Primo Purple. And you notice here I've got some Pearl that I have also put out, rolled out. And this is some green that I rolled out with some Pearl. But what I'm going to do, this is just, right now it's just a single thickness of the pasta machine. And I'm going to put it on this Pearl so that it'll give me a pearl look to it rather than just the plain it's not quite wide enough but we will make it work because making the Skinner blend it's going to spread that's close enough and I will trim the pearl be even with the top. Oh, this purple ended up being a little bit long. Whoops, I just dropped some on the floor. For those of you that have been watching my videos, I usually keep a drawer open right here in front of my desk. But I've decided not to do that. And as a result, I just dumped some clay on the floor. But I'm just trying to trim up some of these edges not that they have to be real even, but it's a good way to start. And that way you don't end up with such a mess. So this way I'm going to end up not only with a Skinner blend, but a Skinner blend that has a pearl finish to it. This green is jade green, the souffle jade. And I've already mixed that with equal parts of pearl. And can you see the shimmer? I just think it's going to make a pretty 
blend. So let me go to my pasta machine. I'm going to put it through this way for, you know, I'll always be putting it through this way. But I'm going to put it through on the thickest setting of the pasta machine first. And you can see my purple got a little wonky, but that's okay. It'll all come out even in the end. And when you do a Skinner blend, you always fold. Of course, you're not. let me do it this way. Put the pearl in the middle. The blue against the blue and the purple against the purple. And I'm just going to pull that over a little bit. And once you get this going to where it, see like this is not stuck together yet. Run it through a few times on this setting. And then after it all sticks together, you can move it down to a number three and it will make your blend blend quicker. I'm sorry, my pasta machine came loose. It'll blend, blend quicker and... The reason this is happening is because this is souffle and this is not, and the souffle is going, is spreading faster than the primo, and that's why it's, you know, the purple keeps getting wonky. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish my blend, and then I'll be back. Okay, I've been rolling this just a few times, and the edges had gotten real raggedy. So I just wanted to show you, all I did was fold the blue over onto the blue and the purple onto the purple. And then I'll continue to um, reduce it. Okay, I've got my Skinner blend done. You might see a few little streaks still left in it, but that's okay. That's, <coughs> excuse me, that's going to be fine. I am going to cut off this end here. And this end here to make them straight. And then I'm going to roll this into a cane. You just roll it up very, very little bit. Just start pushing. Make sure you don't trap any air. And then just roll. All right, then we're going to squeeze it down and make it into a fat plug. And the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want a really wide sheet. This is how you make a Skinner Blend plug. Now, a lot of people... We'll make plugs like this, and then this is how they store them. They'll store them in those, uh, like the stationary, the floss boxes, the little divided plastic boxes. Because you can take this now, and like what we're going to do, I'm going to just take maybe half, maybe even a third of it. And I'm going to make, oh, isn't that interesting? But I'm going to make a Skinner, I'm going to spread this out. Probably should have rolled this much thinner. But I'm going to put this through the pasta machine. Um, maybe on a number three. Let me roll it a little bit. But this just shows you, you can take part of a Skinner blend and use it and still have this in your tub for if you like the way this turns out then you've got more and you can do another one. So then you just roll this through the pasta machine. And there you go. Now what I think I'm going to do first is I'm going to coat this. Um, I probably ought to use the green but I want to let me cut my leaves first. I've got this leaf cutter with a plunger that has the veins in it. I believe I got this from Polymer Clay TV. 
from Elisa and Kira. I'm pretty sure I did. And I'm going to cut three of these. Just be, well, let me, I forgot to press my plunger. And make sure you press your plunger to get your veins. And this didn't cut evenly because I put it back down, but it'll be okay. Let me just get this excess clay off. And a little bit down here. The next one won't be so messy. And I should do it on a piece of patty paper so I can lift it up easily. See, this is really nice because you cut it and then you can press the inside in the plunger to get the veins. Saves you a lot of work. See, there's the second one. And let me cut the third one. And what I'm doing is I'm cutting these out. So I can use the excess to cover my lid. And let me roll this through the pasta machine and then I'll be back. Okay, so I've cut this. Now because of the wire, I can come around this a little bit. So it really isn't necessary to put anything on here to hold the the clay, but I am going to put a little bit of liquid clay, and I've got some, it looks like it's squeezed out here, just a little bit of liquid clay, or you can use bacon bond, whatever, but I'm just going to put a little bit there just to make sure that it sticks. And this is rolled out on a number three. I may have to go a little bit thinner just to get it the right size. So now it's rolled out to a number four. And it's going to lay it on here and press it down. Make sure there's no air bubbles underneath it. And just use your fingers to roll it a little bit. Then you can take your blade or a craft knife or whatever and cut right along here. just above where that metal is going to go. And of course, if you don't have the if you don't have the tools to make a hydrangea, you can do that use this method to make just about anything. And now I'll just use my blade to even it up. Sorry for the silence. Sometimes I get to concentrate on what I'm doing and forget that you're out there watching. 
and I'm just being really quiet. <laughs> Okay, so there, and you can just still roll it with your fingers to as smooth up the edge. But most of that's going to get covered up, and I still see a little tiny air bubble right there. And I just poked it with my, the end of, corner of my blade and squeeze out the air. So this is going to be our base. And these are going to be our flowers. I mean, our leaves. And I put three leaves just because I like odd numbers you notice I'm pressing it with my fingers which is going to mess up the veins but that's okay because it's going to get covered up with flowers just want to make sure this gets stuck and of course you can Bend these a little bit to make them look a little bit more natural. And now the fun part starts. I've got these Kemper cutters. And I don't know which size. Let me go with the large one to start. But you're going to want to put a little bit of all of your colors on here. But this one is the flower shape. And it's probably... me. It's about three quarters of an inch. So this one must be a half an inch. Um... I think I'm going to just stick with the big one. And I'm just going to start cutting out flowers. And some of them is going to be pink and blue, and some of them is going to be pink and purple, and some of them will just be blue, and some will just be purple. But I love these colors together. And just cut out as many as you can. I probably ought to get a second piece of patty paper. Let me move my, the rest of my plug over. I can start putting them over there. This is going to be a multicolored hydrangea, in case you haven't figured that out yet. I don't know how many of you actually have hydrangeas in your yard. I've got a few. I've got. They say that the colors of the hydrangea come from the pH in your soil, but I've got different colors of hydrangeas right next to each other. So I think some of them are uh, specific to whatever piece you get, you know, whatever plant you get. And that looks like about all I'm going to get out of that. Hopefully that'll be enough. If not, I've got more Skinner Blend I can roll out. So let me pull my top over here and I'm going to take a ball tool any ball tool is fine but I'm going to use the one with the a little bit larger tip on it and I'm going to start placing these I'm going to you know like maybe place a blue one there I'm going to try to space these out because I want this to be multicolored. And then I'm going to press in the center with this ball tool and see how it pulled that up a little bit. Can you see how it pulled it cupped a little bit? And I'll do that one. 
and this one. And then I'll put maybe a pink and purple. I'm just trying to keep these separated for a while anyway. I'm going to get to a point where it, whoops, it won't matter. I punch that one clean off the top. Doesn't matter because I'm going to put something in there anyway. Might be a good idea to hold this. And you can cup your flowers a little bit. There's another way you can also take them and put them in your hand and press it in your hand and then kind of make them cup a little bit before you put them down. You can do that. And when I said it didn't matter like this is pink with a little bit of blue, if you put that towards the inside, it's going to get covered up by another flower anyway. But let's just keep going. So let's put a blue. Maybe right here. Maybe right there. Looks like I have a little bit more blue than the other colors. But there's different colors of blue. Some of them are light blue. Some of them are dark blue. Let me put a purple one. Right there. And the idea is just to fill it in. If you've ever seen hydrangeas, they're pretty much filled in. Just It's usually a ball, but I don't want this to stick up very far, so it's going to be a little bit flatter than a regular hydrangea. And I may need to do some more flowers. But you could see it was easy enough to do. And what I might do is cut some of the smaller ones. fill in in some of these places where it needs to be filled in. I'm just going to cut another small slice off of this. And then roll this. Again, this is on a number three. Now this one's going to have those little waves in it that wouldn't be there if I had rolled this a little bit thinner before I cut it. But now I'm going to use the smaller cutter. Yeah. And cut some of these colors. Whoops. And again, I'll just pick them up with my ball tool. See, I got lots of pink. Let's put some purple in here. Now, these are a little bit smaller. So 
So it's just going to help fill in some of the space. Because again, if you look at a hydrangea, well, I'll poke through that one too. Got to be a little easier on these. But if you look at a hydrangea, it's covered with different size little petals. And I like that these are a little bit variegated. It gives it a real interesting look. And I'm just going to start tucking these in wherever I want to put some color. And look at both sides of your flower before you stick it on here to make sure it's the color you want. Now what do you think? Do you think this is beginning to look like a hydrangea? Or as close to being a hydrangea as it can be. Now if you wanted to make it a little bit more realistic looking, you could put a dome under this to make it like a ball. But like I said, I didn't want this um, to be very tall. I really need this blue one. wonder if I can repair that little hole enough. Maybe I'll do it this way. There. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some scrap clay. This is some scrap yellow and white. And I'm going to Hopefully this will come out light enough. If not, I've got more. But I'm going to run this through the pasta machine to get it mixed, and I'll be back. Okay, now I've got that blended. I'm going to take my little teeny tiny Kemper cutter. See, it's a little teeny tiny little circle. Actually, what I need to do is clean my hands. And just a little hint for you guys, I use hand cream, just a cheap hand cream that you get at the dollar store or whatever, just any kind of hand or skin lotion. Wipe this on your, thing, on your hands and then wipe it off with a paper towel and it not only gets the clay off your hands, but it doesn't dry them out. They're nice and smooth because it was hand lotion. Just another little tip while I've got you here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bunch of these little circles. And the reason I'm using the cutter is because I want them to be the same size. And this is also rolled out at a number three. And you'll need as many of these as you have flowers because you're going to put these in the middle. Because if you look at a hydrangea, they've got a little yellow round center to their flower. I'll probably need more, but let me start doing these. So I'm just going to roll these into a circle. into a ball rather, and just place it in that little hole. That's why I said it didn't really matter if the hole got ripped because you're going to cover it up anyway. Let me get me a toothpick or I'll, where's my... And 
can lift this petal up so I can get to that one underneath. There. Just make sure it gets pressed down. And you just go ahead and you put these little round things in the center of every flower. Not that this is a very realistic looking hydrangea, but this does help it look a little more realistic. But I think this is beautiful. And you don't have to use hydrangea colors. You could use oranges and yellows and reds, you know, if you want to just make a fiery type flower. Some of these underneath, you're not going to see the center, so you're not, you don't really have to put anything in there. But the ones that you see should have a little yellow center. That one's not really round. So let me put it in with the point down. So you just continue doing this. I'll probably fast forward through the rest of it. It's not very interesting watching me roll little balls of clay. So I'm going to fast forward through the rest and then I'll go back to regular time when I'm finished. Okay, so now I've got all the little centers in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little spatula type tool that I've got and on each of these little yellow things I'm going to put like a cross in there just to give it a, some texture and they really are, they're not smooth if you look in the flower. They look like they've got sections to them. So this will give that look of sections and not make it look so phony. Actually what I needed to do and I neglected to do before I put them on here is to put some tech, some veins on these flowers and I didn't do that. So I will probably use the same tool and do a little bit of that, not as much as I would have if it had been done before I put them on the project. I think it just makes a cute little accent to your flowers. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for spring. I have had enough snow and cold weather. It's supposed to be cold again the next couple days. <coughs> Excuse me. I had to sneeze. Alright, so what I'm going to do is just, let's see, how am I going to do this? I've got another tool. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold it with this little scoop tool. And just put a little vein down each one of these little flower petals.
Doesn't have to be precise, just so it looks like it's got some veins to it. And the ones that need some support, you can use, put another little tool under it. But I'm going to fast forward through this too because this will take a few minutes. Okay, that looks like I got all of them. Of course, where I put the little cuts, there's little fragments of clay that might have dropped down, so I want to check and make sure that I get all those off. But this is going to be the top to my jar. And I think it's really pretty. But I'm going to go ahead and bake this. Before I bake it, I thought I would show you what I'm going to do. I got to looking at these leaves. If I put this in like in the oven like this, these leaves are going to flop down. So what I'm going to do is make a roll out of paper towels. And put this up underneath the leaves. like that so that the ends will still bend down but the leaf will be up a little bit. I'll have to play with this side but I just wanted to see let you see how I'm going to do this and then I'll be back after it's baked. Okay I am back. Let me remove my paper towels. I'll hold on to them in case I need them again and I'm, and I'm looking at this and it's not real round. It's got a little scoop here in the middle. So I'm not sure. I could add a few little more uh, flowers in here. A, a few little more. That made a lot of sense, didn't it? A few more flowers in here, but I'd have to cut some more off of this. Let me do that. I'm just not going I don't need many, so I'm not going to cut a big slice. But I'm going to roll this out and be right back. Okay, I blended this a little bit more to get these these ripples out. You can see those ripples in there and I just blended it a little bit more. So, let me do a couple Let's see. I'll stick with the blue. And I'll do a pink with a little bit of purple. And I'll do a purple with a little bit of pink. Now this is what I was saying I would do if I had thought about it before. I would take these and just mark us from the center out to each point of the flower to make it look like it's got some veins in the flower which gives it more of an interesting look. To start from the center and go out to each petal. And you don't even have to go all the way to the end of the petal because if you look at a flower, a lot of times the veins end before you get to the tip of the flower petal. So let's just see. All right, now I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to press it with my ball tool and I think I will put one there. I'm sorry, before I do this, because now this is baked clay and raw clay, so I'm either going to need to use some liquid clay or bacon bond or something to hold this in place and since my liquid clay is handy I will use that so I will stick that on there 
with the liquid clay. And I think I'll do the pink one the same way. And I think I'll put that here. I just want to raise up this center a little bit. It doesn't take much to just bring this up. And that kind of brings the center up a little bit so it doesn't See, it doesn't have that concave look. And, of course, that means I need to add some more little yellow centers. Then I will take the end of this and just make a little cross in the center and I will put this in the oven. I have to bake this now to make, get these other little petals done so I'll be back after this bakes. Okay this is now out of the oven and cooled and this looks a little bit better. Um, if you don't like it this way you can still add more. You could put more around the edges but because this is a jar lid and I'll be picking it up, I'm choosing not to. But if it's something more permanent, you can uh, put more petals here around these edges that where there's still some green. You could add more petals. But I'm choosing not to. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this. I have not used this yet. Uh, this was something, it was a gift from one of my subscribers that looked on my um, Amazon wish list and sent this to me. And I thank her, excuse me, thank her very much. This is the Hellmars Crystal Coat Gloss Varnish. And Ginger with the Blue Bottle Tree has tested this and it is polymer clay compatible. So this is the gloss, and I just think this would look pretty with a gloss finish. I do see a little tiny piece of blue that is on a pink flower. And it was loose, so it came right off. Good. But I'm going to try to use this um, to seal it and to make it... Excuse me, I hit the button on my pasta machine while I was shaking this. And like I say, I've never used this before, so I'm not really sure what it's going to look like. But I'm going to spray and turn, spray and turn. It smells like paint. So we will see. I would recommend doing this outdoors because it is a pretty strong smell. But I'm going to let this dry, see how long it takes, and then I will come back and give you an idea how long it took for it to dry, and I'll be back. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes, and it's mostly dry. It's just barely sticky. But I think it's enough that I can finish this up for us. So I'm going to get my jar again. And I'm going to, let's see, this goes this way. I'm going to put this back on my on my ring here. Find a place. I'll put it between these green leaves. And then put it back, let me turn it upside down so I can see what I'm doing. Put it back on the jar. Oh, 
hopefully I did this right. No, maybe I didn't. Maybe it's upside down. I didn't make note of how this came off, did I? So let's do it this way. And make sure that this is some place where it can be attached. Yeah, I think this will work much better. Let me see if I can show you what I'm doing. I'm just squeezing this and putting it back on the jar. Put my jar on the top and hook this. And there you go. There is a cute little jar to use. I could use it here in my workshop. I could use it as, uh, I could put marbles in it. I could use colored water. I could even open this up like this, except it, I'd have to have something in it, and use it as a um, little vase. So how, I hope you like this. This was a lot of fun for me, and I've been, I'm kind of in the hydrangea mood right now. I have a new hydrangea um, stamp that I haven't been able to use yet, so I had it on my mind. And I just thought this was, I had this little jar and just thought I would do something cute on my jar. So, thank you very much for watching, and I will be back again soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.